people are like, oh, we're, we're not symphony people. I always get that question. And I was like, what do you mean? Don't you love Led Zeppelin? They have some of the greatest symphony orchestras behind them. Don't you love Star Wars? Don't you love Aerosmith? Any of those 80s love ballads. You just don't realize they're absolute rock stars. Thanks for joining us on Louisiana's Playground Podcast, your roadmap to all things Lake Charles, Louisiana. I'm Brady Raynard. And I'm Jillian Corder. We're excited to bring you the authentic stories and experiences of Southwest Louisiana with all the tools that you need to build your own personal Lake Charles itinerary. Episode 45 of the show, Beth Doughty of the Lake Charles Symphony Orchestra. So good of her to join us here on the show to talk some music and where you may fit into orchestra music and may not even know it a lot of great points from her talking mm-hmm. about all of that but you may think orchestra is not for you she's going to prove you wrong i like that but before we get to there and on v eats i wanted to shout out a couple of comments we've been getting on our show spotify has a great little uh post game recap when mm-hmm. you're done listening that you can kind of do comments uh if you want to do so on apple i would suggest leave us a rating and then kind of and the review, maybe say if you wanted to do a shout out. But on Spotify, we've gotten a, f- a few. Patricia said, great episode. What good feedback there, huh? That was our episode with the Arts Council. We talked about all things that they've got going on here in Southwest Louisiana. And, you know, Patricia, I agree with you. That was a great episode, wasn't it? But here's my favorite comment. Um, this is from Caleb. Uh, he says, minivans rock. I must have been talking about my minivan five exclamation points because i'm a minivan mama now and thanks caleb for also agreeing that minivans rock he said check out his facebook page to see a super cool van and guess what i did i checked out his facebook page and i found a super cool van look it's not the honda odyssey it is a toyota sienna it's also silvery blue in these pictures anyways he's like outfitted it and he apparently goes camping a lot is what it looks like so um that's awesome and I'm a little jealous. I haven't used mine in that way yet, but I can't wait to. Well, uh, I do need to finish outfitting the attic with some um, with some foam board, and it was too big for my Jeep, so we'll need to use your van to bring it Ah, home. see? So the fun. minivan wins again. Um, another great comment from Lorenzo. I met him the other day. We had some great conversations and said, hey, I'm going to dive right into the podcast. And not only did he dive right into the podcast, he left us a cool comment telling us great show and that we made him hungry. It happens to me every time that I sit in the edit Uh booth and I have to re-listen to uh, everything that we talked about. So Lorenzo, I feel you on that. He said he's looking forward to Gumbo Gators Baseball, which finally back home. uh, And we're going to get to see him at home. So very, very fun. Very exciting as well. Gumbo Gators off to a nice start to the season. But speaking of food and getting hungry, let's do the thing. We're going to make you hungry again, Lorenzo, because this week we're talking about Tony's Pizza. Joe kind of coming out of the gate a little bit before the jingle, letting you know where we're going. Tony's Pizza is exactly where we are. Opened in 1968. So they're approaching 60 years of service here in Lake Charles. They're one of the oldest restaurants here in the city. And they have such a cool laid back atmosphere and decor. Uh, It's a big thing. I know you like that there's ivies kind of everywhere. Oh my gosh, yes. If you go to Tony's Pizza, just don't forget to look at the ivies that they have growing. These are actual real plants. These are not plastic people. And they are... They're not plastic people? They're not plastic comma people. Oh, okay. And they're amazing. They're real... Like, every time I go there, I'm really jealous because I can barely keep an ivy alive. It's honestly kind of like stepping into a time machine. And I mean that by, you know, those classic pizzeria feels, the checkered uh, tablecloth type feel, everything kind of being red. Like, this is what you think about when you think about classic pizzeria, you're going to walk in and say like, oh my gosh, this is like a nostalgia slap in the face. It is. Yeah. All the decor, it's, um, you know, got that vintage feel about it. Like I said, the ivy's growing everywhere. It was amazing. There's um, some really cool like architectural pieces, even the way that the booths are built in are, are really neat. A lot of woodwork going on. And we can't not talk about the kind of Tiffany style glass light fixtures. They're beautiful. Stained glass. Yeah, so it's that Tiffany glass, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's got the grapes going on. It's a classic Italian pizzeria feel to this place. Uh, And and also, you know, you step right in, you order at the front, um, then you go have a seat and they bring your order out to you. You you get a number. There's there's just something to that that feels so... 
where that okay okay this is gonna sound lame but that cheers everyone knows your name style place you know what I mean this is it like you feel you walk in and they're like hey Jill like you know you just feel like you know people there chicken parm again right yeah exactly so um but this time I did get something different I branched out well, uh, they're known for things like their homemade meatballs and homemade sauces, pizzas and po' boys. They've got salads and pastas, a really complete menu all the way around. A little bit of blending of Southwest Louisiana culture within uh, a classic Italian restaurant, pizzeria style menu. Um, something that they call their secret. They do have imported things like Greek olives and they import their cheeses as well, which really help make a lot of their menu items it's authentic, stand out. Yeah. Um, so when we when it came down to ordering, I got the ravioli and spaghetti. It's like a dual plate, if you will. Um, it's got ravioli, but also uh, spaghetti with meat sauce. So you're getting the best of both worlds. The spaghetti was really flavorful. Their marinara is really unique. It's like a signature marinara sauce that goes on all their dishes. It's got this sweetness to it that's really good. And I haven't found that it tastes like anywhere else. To me, it's very unique and I love it. So it's got that on it. The meat sauce, the ravioli was really good. It's cheese ravioli. Um, and they also top it with um, a sliced ham. They do their Parmesan across the top and mozzarella. It's it's really good. It's it's a pretty big plate for you as well. Oh, yeah. I ate on it for three days. <laughs> with a big piece of garlic bread too, right? Mm-hmm. Big piece of garlic bread, which is perfectly toasted. Exactly. It's just, again, like you said, that warm family like a big hug of food kind of thing um it's really good it also came with like a side salad which i know a lot of places like that's just like you may not talk about it but it was really good they have they've got their ranch on it it's good i'm a ranchaholic so y'all know me or maybe you don't so so wait being a ranchaholic means that there's a such thing as ranchahol just don't question it (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> all right uh because we went to a pizzeria i got the pizza um and i love their crust they've got that real soft doughy crust i much prefer that versus a hard crust a crunchy crust like a thin crust yeah, yeah. Uh, i love a good soft doughy crust and theirs is perfect for that uh cheesy and it's salt uh, saucy as well so they, a nice combo of both of those i get the chopped jalapenos across the pepperoni pizza they've got good thick cut pepperoni as you mentioned that sauce even on the pizza as well, you can tell it's got a little sweetness to it. Just mm-hmm. just a, a little bit uh, part of their signature dish there. Uh, and they're also known, believe it or not, for what they call their Tony sauce. Mm-hmm. It is a sweet barbecue. It's very tangy. Um, but at the same time, it works on their pizza. It works on everything. You know, and they obviously have like chicken wings and stuff too. It works on their on their chicken wings, but it works on their pizza. It works drizzled on chicken parm. Yeah, I've but done when it you before. say barbecue sauce on a, a pepperoni pizza, you don't necessarily but it works. It it it's it different. Comp, the sweetness complements with the sweetness of the sauce. And so it all works really well together. So I would say get it and see if it works for you as well. Uh, but it definitely is a signature sauce of theirs that they use for their pizza and other items. And it certainly worked for yours because you had so many chopped jalapenos on it. Fun fact. So Brady brings home the leftover pizza, right? Because he couldn't finish the whole thing by himself. And my mom, who watches our kids every day, my mom is there and she's like, oh, I'll just eat some of this pizza one day. And as she put it when I came home that day, well, Brady tried to kill me today. <laughs> Because it was covered in jalapenos and red pe- red pepper flakes, and she was not prepared for that at all. She thought she was getting some tame pepperoni pizza. That's like a that's like a two scale on the hotness scale. Not for us. We're built different. Not for you normies. <laughs> you're 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 built different. You're built strange. That's um, right. That's right. I'm built diff. You're I'm built, built different. Diff. Um. So Tony's Pizza, a really fun place to visit. Um. Full of locals usually, but they're welcoming in the crowd. If you're coming, if you're coming into town, taking a visit, like this is the place to stop by, grab a slice of pizza. Um. Really, really yummy, and in a great spot. So it's right on um Pre on Lake Road, which is just off. Interstate 210, it's the perfect place to be to stop in and get some pizza. 
From a great meal to a great guest, we welcome on Beth Dottie, the executive director of the Lake Charles Symphony. Before taking on that role, she spent nearly three decades as a wedding and events coordinator and manager in her family business. In addition, she's been a member of the Live Well Group, the Women's Commission, and the Lake Charles Rotary Club. In one way or another, she's really been involved with countless major events across southwest Louisiana. And now for the uh, cherry on top, an appearance on the Louisiana's Playground podcast. Of course, I'm joking. Welcome to the show, Beth. Thank you so much for having me. You you know this uh, as well as anyone that Southwest Louisiana is known for big city amenities and small town charm. It makes for a variety of experiences that someone can add to their itinerary when visiting Lake Charles from the types of food, outdoor adventures, national regional entertainment, everything that the lake area draws in. So before we get started today talking about our main topic, which is the symphony, um, we're going to ask you some rapid fire questions so that people can see how you play in Louisiana's playground. Are you ready? Okay, I am ready. Okay, number one, crawfish or gumbo? Gumbo. Oh, good choice. Why is that? Because I'm allergic now to crawfish. Oh. oh. Sadly. Oh, Very no. sadly. Yes. First allergy on the podcast. Yes. <laughs> I think that, yes. I think that um, might be the first yeah. one. Yeah. Okay, have developed an allergy. Have Didn't developed, used to be. No, no. Okay. No, and crawfish are hard for me. But I will tell you this. I will take a Benadryl for <laughs> crabs, for oh, our okay. Louisiana blue crabs. <laughs> Every time. You'll risk it. Uh, okay. Risk it every day. The happy pin on, on deck. <laughs> yes. Oh but I do goodness. love gumbo and um and I, I love the way people treat their gumbo. Like everybody makes it different. And I love to have that conversation with people about, hey, how'd you make your gumbo? Or what do you put in your gumbo? And they love to tell you exactly everybody loves to love share that. Love that. And it's such a great conversation starter. Okay. Our next question pool side or beach side? Pool side. Pool. That was a quick answer. Yes. Why is that? Because I, I'm a redhead and I don't <laughs> like the sun, so I like a big umbrella. And But I love the pool. I love the water. Yeah. And I do love Louisiana beaches. I grew up um, with a camp on, uh, on Johnson's Bayou mm-hmm. and everything, so I have great memories of um, – you know, Holly Beach, sure. um, Johnson's Bayou, yeah. getting out in the waves, um, you know, picking shells off the beach. Sure. So I do love a good beach, but as a redhead. Can control your environment a bit I, better yes, at the pool. exactly. Understood, understood. Okay, concert or comedy show? I think I know the answer. It's going to be a concert every day. <laughs> so what are you listening to? There's a band called uh, Lake, Lake Street Dive that I really like mm-hmm. um, um, at work. I listen to a lot of Bridgerton, um, Bridgerton, I don't know how d- different people say it different ways, but the Bridgerton music, sure. which is the orchestrated versions sure. of wildly popular songs. Yeah, kind of like that um, vibe, yeah. vitamin string quartet yes, vibe, yes. Like mm-hmm. current yes. songs, but with an orchestra yes. playing it. And then I'm an 80s girl. Mm-hmm. So on the radio, there's uh, in the car, it's always 80s to drive to. Okay. Um, but if I'm looking for something different, I would check out that band. They're really, really good. In fact, I was, they're playing with the Colorado Symphony Orchestra oh, cool. at the Red Rocks in July, right after our summer pops. So I might be taking off to go see them play with them. Okay. Fantastic. On a cool band. Very cool. Well, I'll say this as we start our conversation, uh, we had a, podcast a few weeks ago where we talked um uh sports and joe gave the disclaimer right at the top saying that this is not in my wheelhouse and i think orchestra is is kind of the same for me there are definitely some times that i do enjoy it star wars music for example john williams love i I listen to that starter that is my um that's my thinking music, right? Yeah. I'm working on something. I have it looped. Uh, I have mm-hmm. the, the piano mm-hmm. uh, looped there. But for me, it's it, it's kind of um, it's a bit far unfamiliar for territory, you. right? Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, how would how do you help bridge that gap for people? Well, I love this question because it's my favorite question out there. Because let's just face it, you go out there to any music event. And people are like, oh, we're, we're not symphony people. I always get that question. And I was like, what do you mean? Don't you love Led Zeppelin? They have some of the greatest symphony orchestras behind them. Don't you love Star Wars? Don't you love, um, you know, Aerosmith? Any of those 80s love ballads mm-hmm. definitely had an orchestra behind them. And my personal favorite, Beth by Kiss, is uh, <laughs> has a big, huge orchestra behind it. So um, you you just don't realize 
that orchestra players and musicians um, of that caliber that we present to Southwest Louisiana are rock stars. They're absolute rock stars. And Summer Pops last year was a huge example of that. Sean Ardwan played, and we um, orchestrated all of his music and um, brought in all of our players, and they felt like rock stars. They had the best time. If, if you missed that show, you missed probably one of the best performances of in the last several years since the pandemic because Sean brought it, our orchestra brought it, and where can you get 50 performers on stage yeah. with, um, you know, all jamming out to the same song? I mean, it's, it's, it's electric. It truly is. So it's not so much people – don't like it. It's it's more of a lack of, of understanding or knowledge Unfamiliar. about it. Yes, yes. And I came to this position as a non musician. Mm-hmm. I'm a concert goer, and I have been to oh probably over 500 concerts in my life. So I, I mean, when you ask that question, I truly do love concerts, and I love all kinds of music and all uh, different variety of varieties of music and all of that. So I'm I'm the same person that is out out there. I didn't just changed my likes. I just always appreciated great musicians, great music, um, all different genres, um, all different vocals. And I like country. I like rock. I love the eighties, as I well said earlier. Um, but I think it's, I think it's just, you have to be open-minded and you have to say, you know what, I'm going to try this. And then once we get you on one of our pops concerts, then you need to come see one of our classical concerts because they're amazing. They truly are. It just opens the door for you it for does. a whole new it does. experience. It truly does. And you want your kids to perform well in sciences, maths, any of your STEM projects, put them in a, in a music class. Teach them piano. Teach them um, the violin, the cello, the um, oboe, the saxophone, whatever it is um, that you want them to learn because that is – dire to the performance um, in the schools right now. And that's what's severely lacking, especially our strings programs in our schools. So shout out to Chris, Chris Gunter over at um, over at Barb High School, who has a great orchestra. If you haven't seen them, they perform all over town. We're so excited about being able to get those uh, students developed and bring them into our orchestra one day. So, um, you know, you want you want a, your children to perform. Get them involved. Teach them music. Let's rewind just a little bit sure. and go back to the history um, of the Lake Charles Symphony. We're talking 1958. Yes. Um, okay. So 1958 is when. Okay. So there were four professors at McNeese, music professors at McNeese, that decided to put an orchestra together, and they grew in popularity. Now Adley Cormier will tell you before then. Rosa Hart commissioned those same four perform, uh, uh, professors, and they used to play for the Little Theater. And that's how it initially started. I'm having Adley research it completely for me. But <laughs> he is it, the, if you're not familiar is, with Adley Cormier, he is the historian of for Southwest, Southwest Louisiana. Louisiana. And, it truly and is. was on a former episode of the podcast, yeah. so make sure to kind of check that out yeah. as, as he went in depth about Lake Charles oh, history. So. He's super fun. He's super interesting to talk to, mm-hmm. too. So uh, if you ever get a chance to, you know, listen to what he has to say, if he corners you in a room to tell you about something, <laughs> listen, because it's going to be mm-hmm. spot on. But anyway, back to our history. So in 1958, the um, the Junior League of Lake Charles um we're a legacy project of them. And so they helped us get our nonprofit status and become the Lake Charles Symphony LL, nonprofit LSC 501. And so that's how we began as a uh, nonprofit. And we were a leader in the arts. We were one of the first uh, arts programs in Southwest Louisiana. So once you have the arts and once you have the symphony, you can really build a community off of that. So we're very proud of our history and our deep history and the fact that we've had such amazing conductors like Dr. Kushner, which everybody knows about, Chelsea Tip- Tipton, he's world class, and Bill Rose, who is our, you know, homegrown right here, not homegrown, but he's been part of McNeese for many, many mm-hmm. years, who's amazing. Um, so we have some great conductors in our wheelhouse, and we have some great conductors coming in. So, so let's talk about the kind of performances that the orchestra is doing throughout the year. You can only 
perform so many large, large scale mm-hmm. orchestras because you have, like I said, 50 orchestra members and these are paid professional orchestra members and musicians. So you have to be able to afford that. And so you can only do so many of those. In the meantime, we're trying to stay current with the candle concerts that are across America. And that what that is is a pairing of classical music and um, contemporary music. So recently we just did Bach and Beatles, which sold out. I should have done two shows on it. Oh, wow. Um, and stay tuned. We might come back and do another show on it because it was um, – it was incredible, and um, and it it was done at Central School, so we were able to bring in the history of Central School. Uh, we like to find unusual places in mm-hmm. Lake Charles to be able to pull that pull those um, the history mm-hmm. of our city. Sure, and and we want to go to West Cal too. There's some um, event centers and everything over there that we want to work with. And I'm a sulfur girl. Um, originally, I'm a tour. So um, I definitely want to be able to go into to um, West Cal and and Sulphur and of course Westlake and do some things over um, on that side because we are the Lake Charles Symphony of Southwest Louisiana. We're not just in Lake Charles base. So, um, but that's one thing we're doing. Another thing we're doing is we have some educational initiatives. So we're trying to get in the schools. We're trying to educate the kids about the symphony orchestra. Um, we brought. We paired with some Louisiana artists, which were um, one being one being Sean that I just talked about. But Amanda Shaw came and played for Christmas. Oh, cool. And uh, she played her fiddle with all of her long hairs and everything (laughs) with our orchestra. And she was incredible. Um, She actually has a STEM project right now that we're trying to get her back into the schools with. Um, And then sadly, I was I had been talking to Joelle Um, Because he was going to be our next Louisiana performer. So we're going to try to, every couple of years, pull in some sort of Louisiana performance with our orchestra um, as we can do. And I think that's very important for our culture and our area. I think so. Keep it alive. Yeah. 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 Well, you'd mentioned Summer Pops a couple of times. Can you dive into that? Because I know what, this year's it's going to be 80. So it's, at this point, it seems like a little bit of a pet project more so than, than normal for you. Well, you know, it was something I wanted to do since I got here. I've only been part of the orca- part of the symphony as the director for the past almost two years now. It'll be mm-hmm. July first. So I walked into Summer Pops was my first um, thing I did, which was uh, the magician a couple of years ago, Michael uh, Grand- Grandinetti, and he was fantastic. And it was all John Williams music. So you miss the Star Wars and the ET and the it. Raiders and all that. But we'll have to do it sometime for it, just for you. And then, of course, I talked about Sean. And then, um, so coming up this year, we're bringing in some performers that are um, a wide range of uh, vocalists and musicians that will play along with the with the orchestra. And it'll be '80s music. I mean, you know, it'll be Prince and Cyndi Lauper and and um, Tears for Fears and all of the good stuff. But who doesn't love '80 minutes? 80s music and it's a multi-generational show so you know your grandparents parents and uh, grandkids can all come to the show and enjoy the music and it's familiar to everybody so this is probably going to be one of the most familiar musical performances that we're going to do but I thought it would be a lot of fun um, to really bring the community together um it usually is about 1,500 people once you put the people in the stadium seats and the tables on the floor. Mm-hmm. So it's a big community community project. And we couldn't do it without our um, our corporate sponsors and our and our grants and everything else. I mean, this is this is a labor of love. Sure. Um, but summer pops is meant to be fun and exciting. Mr. Gaddy's provides pizzas. Um, so, and all, pro- all of the pizza profit comes back to us. They just donated it's 100% oh, wow. profit back to us. So it's a big donation and we, and they've been with us since the eighties. So we want to give them a big shout out. Um, and so it's just, it's a blast. It's an absolute blast. And it sounds like this is the perfect jumping off point for a person who might be unfamiliar with a symphony, maybe it's never exactly seen an orchestra before, been a part of that kind of performance. This is your time to jump into it and yes, dive in. exactly. And bring your family. And we have great family packs and we have uh, two four packs um, for the stadium seating and, and so on. And so it's it's a blast. And it is. It 
it is just a lot of fun. And if you think, oh, I might want to enjoy that, or I might want to get my kids involved with, with um, you know, a musical instrument, this is the perfect time to show them what they could do with it and how much fun it actually could be. And that's July 13th? July 13th at the Lake Charles Event Center. Okay, very cool. And um, doors open at 6, it starts at 7. Um, I always like to say grab some dinner early um, at one of your downtown restaurants, your local restaurants, and then come and see us and then grab some pizza as you leave to enjoy for the rest <laughs> of the night. So, um, but I always like to promote the downtown restaurants sure. for right here on the lakefront and performing um, here. And, and let's talk a little bit about that kind of symbiotic relationship that the symphony has with, with businesses in, in Lake Charles and, and how it benefits the city as a whole. Well, um, the economic e- impact of a of the arts, but let's talk specifically orchestra. It fuels local economies and attracts new businesses. Um, it's great if, for example, I just talked to a bunch of the people with the LNG group that um, that are building here, and I wrote up some um, information for them to present to the group that was meeting to decide whether or not to have it here in Lake Charles or go on to Baton Rouge. And um, so I was able, and I'm not saying they came because there's a symphony, but it was one added plus Mm -hmm. um, that we were able to provide to say, hey, Lake Charles has a symphony and it's been around since 1958. We have a great history of music, whether it's orchestrated music, because a lot of these musicians play in jazz bands and in rock bands, and then they come in and play for us. uh, on different performances. So don't think that they're just, you know, rockers out there playing. They know they know music and they know their stuff. But um, I even talked to one of my orchestra members, and I didn't think about this. She said, you know, when my husband, who's an engineer, decided to go here, to come to Lake Charles or here, I said, no, Lake Charles has a, an orchestra, and she's a violin um, she's a violinist in our orchestra. She's a teacher here in town. Wow. So there's a lot of benefits when it comes to looking at what is the rest of the story about Lake Charles? You know, what is the rest of what we want to present out there to Louisiana? Um, and, and that is the arts. And we are all working as to collaborate with between the Children's Museum, Imperial Calcasieu, the uh, Arts and Humanities Council. I mean, we all collaborate together because we're all like, if we all come up together and we all build the arts up together in our community, think about what the next five to 10 years is going to be mm-hmm. like for us. And if we get more and more of our community involved, where are we, where, what legacy are we going to be able to leave for the next generation and look at and see what happens to Lake Charles and see in Southwest Louisiana, Southwest Louisiana and see how it grows. It's about a complete experience. It truly, it truly is. That's why I left a, a big job to do something in the nonprofit world. I wanted something that was still part of the community. It wasn't that I, you know, I could have gone and done lots of different things, but I wanted to bring, help be part of this community and bring something back to this community. And that was very important to me. I love that you talk about full picture because I think a lot of people might get the idea of what Southwest Louisiana is. And um, while we do love our our country artists and our swamp pop, uh, you know, these these amazing Creole artists that we have that, that in Southwest Louisiana, that's not our only identity. No. We're, we're not, we, we don't ever want to box ourselves into this very specific right. niche type of thing. And I think being able to present a symphony to the world just set, just explains that, that we are so much more than what you might right. think we are. Right. It's one of many arts groups out there that are working hard to secure funding, secure sponsorship. Um, let's just face it. A lot of people want to do STEM and not STEAM. Um, I'm here to say you can't have one without the other. Mm-hmm. Your test scores will show that. My I come from it. Uh, my dad was a principal, so I know th- I know what they look for, and I know what he has preached throughout our lives. And um, my my brother is a musician. Um, he has. I'm going to just use him as an example. He's going to hate me for this, but he has <laughs> has had ADD. Mm-hmm. You know, not 
you know, back in the day, you didn't really diagnose all that. Sure. But music and um, guitar and everything that he took on helped him focus, helped him with that. And I'm going to use him as an example just because I can. Mm -hmm. But there's a million other stories out sure. there like it. And so that, that was really, really um, – it's something for us to really consider when we think about music. And I'm over at Central Arts. You should see the kids in and out with violins, cellos, um, going up to their art, their music teachers at uh, different times, piano, um, guitar. And there's just kids with big, huge smiles on their faces and parents patiently waiting for them in the parking lot while mm -hmm. they go do that. Um, there's a dance studio up there. So there are so many different forms of art that we have such a rich heritage in that we just need to evolve and, and see what the next chapter brings for us. Speaking of that, how do you innovate and really attract new people to classical music, whether it be the children or late adopters? So I think, I think like you said earlier, which was um, if you're not familiar with it, a Pops concert is the way to dive in. But I think it's about um, bringing in artists. And I, I love our idea of bringing in the Louisiana artist. And it's been very, very popular to do. And Sean had never done a, an orchestrated performance before mm -hmm. until that night. Amanda had never done an orchestrated performance of her music that that night. And so we orchestrated both of those. No other, um, no other orchestras in our area or out there has done, has worked with either one of those artists. And that's why, again, I was so excited about Joel. Um, but I will say I saved his voicemails that Aww. he would left me. So, cause they were so, I don't know if y'all ever talked to him or not, but mm -hmm. he was a sweetheart. He was really I'm very blessed that I got to meet yeah, him. For, for those not familiar, this is Joel Sonia that we're talking mm -hmm. about and um, who just passed away this Correct. year. And, um, you know, maybe there's still an opportunity to to celebrate his music possibly, in the future. Possibly. And we'll have to see. I know he had a unique vision. Sure. So um, we'll see. We'll see what, what comes up. Yeah. And, um, but I think those are great. I think those candle concerts are a great way to collab between classical and contemporary music. Um I saw more men in that audience than I saw at any of our big symphony classical performances. So I think there's a way to kind of merge um, that interest and uh, get them involved because, you know, the women, the women will get grab other women and they'll come to the big sure. concerts and get all dolled up and everything. Um, speaking of which, you don't have to be all dolled up. Uh, you know, a lot of people think you have to get all dressed up sure. and, you know, no, it's, it's Sunday clothes if, 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 if that, and, um, you know, just to, just to have the, um, experience, we don't, mm -hmm. we want you to come and have the experience. Yeah. We don't want you to have to feel like you're, uh, less than or anything like Not that. Not out you of just, place. Yeah, you're, exactly. You're welcome. I mean, I did weddings for 27 years. Girl, sure. you should see what I saw in the dresses. <laughs> I, pinned, I pinned a boutonniere on a father of the groom who w had Dickies on. And you know, yep, yep. can't go wrong with a pair yep. of Dickies work pants. Yep, he was all no full on. The suit. crowd always oh, chants the Dickies work pants. No, no, it was the, the full, suit, the full zip up and oh, everything. Oh, the yeah, full Dickies okay. white rose. I will never onesie. forget that as long yeah. as I live. The, the, the male the romper. Suit. Yes, yeah, the male romper. Yes, yes. <laughs> so anyway, so and I'm not dogging that out or anything. Sure. I'm just saying all are welcome. Be comfortable. Exactly. Yes. Right. Be comfortable and all are welcome because I will be in a dress, but I guarantee you at some point my tennis shoes go on after I start <laughs> running around. So anyway. So that's wonderful. So how um, outside of tickets for specific shows and events that are coming up, um, what options are there for, for memberships? There's a symphony society, right? Okay. Yeah. So that's the big one. Um, right now, I'm, I'm really focusing on building memberships mm -hmm. because there's so many benefits to that. Okay. We're adding concerts to next season. Um, they're not the big concerts, but we're adding performances to next season. We're going to have two additional uh, candle concerts. We're having um, an additional Christmas pro performance, which we're really excited about a Christmas performance coming up. Um, we'll have, uh, we're adding choirs uh, from our local choirs and, um, so we're, we're, we're super, we want to be able to bring in other groups and, um, 
and sh highlight the area. Mm -hmm. um, so that's very important. Um, as far as the Symphony Society and the, um, the Symphony Society really helps us with our endowment and helps us grow those big orchestras. Um, so if there's anybody listening out there that um, wants to talk more of that, please, please contact us because those are your big donations that we yeah. really need to continue forward and um, bring the live symphony full orchestras um, out together and bring in the really good conductors and, and so on and so forth. So, so two years experience already under your belt there or nearing that. And from the countless people that you've already talked to, what has maybe been your favorite or most memorable performance or moment, or even maybe you've secondhand performance or moment that you've really got from that you're like, man, I wish I could have been there or that you've seen with your own eyes. Okay. So my favorite with my own eyes was actually watching that entire crowd uh, last year at Summer Pops mm -hmm. with um, Sean just bringing the crowd together and everybody standing up and then and because I'm outside of the box, you know, yeah. a lot of times, mm -hmm. so I don't get to see it. But to stand back and to see, oh, my gosh, we did this. We yeah. look at our orchestra buying into all of this orchestrated music and showing up there with an accordion playing with, you know, these, you know, 16 string uh, violins and and then the cellos and then the horns and then the percussion and everything else in the woods and everything else that that went to. And then everybody in the audience on their feet mm -hmm. having a blast. And, um, you know, it doesn't get better than that. Um, that moment where you just like it clicked and it, you said this right. worked. Right. It did. Our big experiment worked and we did it and no one else did. I and love that. Um, not one other orchestra in the entire world did what we did last summer. Love it. Um, and then, That's fantastic. and then, you know, Amanda was, she was so cute and so amazing. And, it, and we had a lot of kids, um, that really loved watching her play her fiddle. Mm -hmm. The one I missed that this was before. Well, first of all, when I was very young, I got to see Dr. Kushner perform, but I wish mm -hmm. I could have seen more of him sure. just because of the sheer, excitement of it all and the memories of it all and he and the history of it all um and I'm very blessed because I did I have in the wedding business I have gotten to play with you know Barbara Ballou who is the quintessential heart player or you know um there's just so many other people out there that I did get to be around Dr. Buckles and all the smaller groups because mm -hmm. of the being in the wedding business and and having to book a lot of that um, but the one I missed and I want to at some point bring back is Evangeline. I heard I've heard a million times um, about that performance. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be um, great to pull back into our Louisiana group um, sure. and maybe do an encore, maybe a 10 year anniversary of it or something along those lines, because I think a lot of people missed it. And I think it would be something that shouldn't I think it's something that shouldn't be missed. And I kick myself about about it. So. Well, that's good that you've yeah. got plans, yes. you've got oh, dreams, yes. and uh, good things are brewing for you guys. I am. And um, this season's going to be a lot of choirs, fire and light. That's our theme. Mm -hmm. 2025, 26, we're going to take you to church. And so we're going to tour it. some churches around Lake Charles and, and have a good time with that. Oh, that's so, very fun. Yeah. So we've got some big plans. Awesome. Uh, shameless uh, ask then is, are, are we going to get a Star Wars night at any point? Look, because look, John Williams has such a. I'm gonna put it out there in the universe. If uh, I can get some good sponsors, I would love. Okay, to I was do. gonna say because yes. it, it's more than just John Williams at this point now. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know, you've got what is it, Lord Vin, L Ludwin Goring, Ludwig, yes. and then you've got Kevin Kiner, who's done a lot yes. of the animation stuff, yes. and so those three have really taken it to another level. Yes. Uh, built on the foundation, the massive foundation, right? That John Williams did, but. There's there's so much there. There's and, some, and you know what else? Okay, so I'm gonna tell something else about which myself. I know I came out and said, uh, you know, I'm not very experienced, and then I just named three composers. Uh, uh -huh. You know more I, than you I, think. I you was do. like totally impressed that you caught me speechless just now, Brady. <laughs> so. But um, here's what I do want to tell you: is I'm a Halloween birthday girl, so um, I always say I'm a redheaded Scorpio born on Halloween. But anyway, <laughs> I have this dream to do. If I said Danny Elfman style concert 
out in uh, Lake Charles. And, I, and we're talking about it. I've talked to Matt a little bit about it and all. Okay. So we're working on something. There's something in the works that, so keep your ears open. But I would love to do something Halloween. Something um, themed. I like spooky it. Spooky theme. Yes, yes. Very I cool. love doing um, theme things like that. We have learned just recently, you know, um, South Lake Theater had a big Star Wars immersive experience there. And you see how much attraction that had. Um, so anything with a theme, you know that you've got people that are going to completely buy in. And it's like you said with Sean, it just, it works. It works. Exactly. And a birdie has told me I'm not the only Star Wars music John Williams fan in town. Oh, the know. mayor himself listens to it as his think music as well. Well, <laughs> and you know what? He asked me about it and I just, my mouth dropped. He asked me about it and... Okay, so I started in July, and we did the performance. And then probably September, October, mm -hmm. I met with the mayor to talk about different things. And so, yes, it's in the back of my head. Because he goes, what about John Williams? <laughs> I was like, you just missed it in July. That's So we funny. have to kind of broaden it out. Um, sure. There's a trick about John Williams' music. Again, I'm not a musician, but I've been told a lot of his music is um, studio and so you're so familiar with that music that you it's very hard to vary from it. Sure. Now, you want to talk about a performance I missed. My friend was in New York and stumbled upon one ticket to his performance with Yo-Yo Ma. Oh, wow. At, yes, and um, at Carnegie Hall. And she sent me all kinds of pictures of it. And I was very, very, very jealous of that. Sure. And you should be too. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I would have stumbled on that ticket. I huh? am. Yeah, I would have. The one yeah. ticket. The rest of her friends I, went I to Lion King. I would have cashed that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I would have yeah. cashed that one exactly. for sure. But I want to challenge everybody out there that's listening. Come to a concert. Um, July 13th is our Summer Pops. It is going to be so much fun. Totally awesome 80s. You can bring your kids and your family. Um, but come to a concert, come to a candle concert. If you see the Lake Charles Symphony performance for performing, it is always going to be the top of the top and the best of the best. And so we're very proud of what we're doing here in Southwest Museum. Thanks again to Beth for joining us here on the show. And thank you for taking time out of your day to join us on the podcast and leaving comments. We've gotten some on Spotify recently, so thank you for that. If you enjoyed the show, please follow the podcast, leave us a rating or a review. We really, really do appreciate it. This always helps us grow our audience and further share the unique experiences that Lake Charles in Southwest Louisiana has to offer. Just go to visitlakecharles.org slash podcast for more episodes, advice on where to eat, and events happening this weekend. I'm Jillian Porter. And I'm Brady Reynard. Thanks again for coming to play at Louisiana's Playground. See you.